Hi everyone, welcome to Single Values. So today we're going to look at Ozone. Ozone is a new listed company in its essential form. It's basically the Amazon of Russia, um, except it's much, much smaller in the scheme of things. Even though they opened the same time as Amazon, uh, things just haven't moved as quick for this company as it has for Amazon. Amazon's a trillion dollar company. This is a seven billion dollar company. Uh, so, you know, the growth for Amazon has been exponential, the growth for Ozone hasn't been that good as of late. Um, yeah, so as it's put, Ozone stock surges 34% in IPO in the US, uh, while the Russian online retailer is offering growth but not profits. Um, uh, we can all understand, having looked, uh, watched Amazon for a very long time, growth in the long run matters much more than profits in the short run um, so this is a company that raised 990 million dollars uh, which should keep them going for a good amount of time um, so the, yeah like their pricing was 30 dollars and as it's put uh, they started up in 1998 uh, same as amazon and they did books and dvds um, but yeah, like uh, I guess they haven't grown as fast as Amazon, particularly uh, there's been some challenges, formidable distances, like Russia is a massive country, uh, where, which logistics becomes quite a difficult problem, uh, and yeah, and a wrenched postal service made deliveries a challenge. Uh, many of Russia's 145 million consumers clung to payments in cash keeping them off the digital commerce map um yeah so i guess that really sums it up like russia just hasn't been as developed as uh, the u.s has uh but it is heading in the right direction where it is starting to develop in a, a very fast pace hence why ozon now is starting to show the growth rates that they probably should have showed maybe 10 or 15 years ago uh but things were slow things have not moved as quick um, so yeah, like we can just like consider that Russia just hasn't been as adaptive to technology as much as a lot of uh, Western nations have. Uh, if we look at the website, you can notice that um, this is very uh, oh, very traditional in terms of an e-commerce uh, e site, online retailer. They sell a lot of items. It's uh, it's a nice layout. It looks like there's a large, large variety of choices. What I noticed was they actually put a Nasdaq listed part on their logo. Like, um, it's actually, I think, one of the first times you've ever seen a consumer website actually put it there. Uh, most cases, consumer websites never really, like, make it that obvious that they're a publicly listed company. Though, I kind of see that it kind of matters, particularly in Russia, where the, a lot of websites get, it might actually run scams or there might be a lot of fraud that goes around. So saying you're a listed company actually just goes a long way in building some credibility with your consumers. Um, and it's probably the, one of the few situations where being a publicly listed company actually is a selling point to your consumers. Uh, whereas in the US or other nations, uh, if you say you're a publicly listed company, it wouldn't really make a difference like the only incentive would be we're publicly listed please invest in us if you want to if you like what we do um but yeah like here ozon kind of takes an unconventional approach where being a listed company actually is a credibility to your website that you're legitimate that you can be trusted um so i thought that was uh, quite an interesting touch um yeah so we can kind of see the colors of the uh, brand itself is about as blue and pink um and they seem to yeah like they seem to like package everything quite well the marketing seems good um as we can see right here and they also have like same day delivery about to about 40 percent of the russian population that it can reach anyway um though you know i guess as they kind of cite uh distance as being a big reason why it might actually be very difficult to actually reach all 145 million consumers in russia so i think until yeah like until things improve in a logistics form uh which they are building a lot more warehouses uh that that was basically one of their bigger goals 
um, in the next couple of years is just to continue to build more warehouses to shorten uh, distances where they have to deliver. Um, so in the future, they could expand their one-day delivery to a much larger uh, consumer base going forward. And the mission statement of this company is transforming the Russian consumer economy by offering the widest selection, best value, and maximum online shopping convenience while empowering sellers to achieve greater commercial success. Um, yeah, so currently they have about 11.4 million active buyers, so uh, less than 10% of the current, um, I guess, consumer base in Russia. So they still have a lot they can continue to grow in. Um, and they have 18.1 thousand active sellers so it's it's good to have more sellers more variety more competitive pricing um, what I find really interesting um, is how fast they've grown the user base in the last two years so at the start of 2019 they had 5.3 million active buyers um, in, in the quarter in quarter three of this year they had 11.4 million um, so it's really showing how fast they've grown in a, in a space of less than two years. They've doubled their active buyer base. Um, but what's also interesting is from 2019 quarter one, when they had 5.3 million active buyers, they managed to increase it to 7.9 million active buyers in 2019 quarter four. So if you go from quarter one to quarter four and increase your active buyer base by 50%, that shows um, some really good traction. And it was also showing that it wasn't just what the events of this year that kind of proved uh, very good for this company, but they were already on a really good uh, pathway to building a great user base to begin with. And this year probably just helped them accelerate that. Also, quarter four tends to be a much stronger period in terms of like online shopping or just shopping in general. So I kind of expect quarter four for, 2000, for 2020, when they announced their fourth quarter, um, to actually have an even more bigger increase in the user, you know, by active buyer base. Um, so that's also one thing to look out once they release their next quarter results. Um, and also their sellers, the amount of active sellers is also very impressive how they've increased it in the last two years. So quarter one, they had 1.3 thousand sellers. Quarter four, 6.4 thousand. Again, in the space of a year, they managed to increase it um, quite a lot. Um, and in and this year, they've even managed to increase it even more from 6.4 to 18.1. Uh, but if we look, if we look at the past two years, um, they've gone from 1.3 to 18.1 thousand users um, in terms of sellers. So I think that's that, that really shows this uh, company has basically in the last two years they've probably done more than probably in their last eighteen years or so of being I guess um, a, a online retailer in terms of having more products having more active buyers uh, and hence why I kind of see the momentum starting to build up for this company. And then it's going to continue to be even stronger going forward. Um, as they put it here, uh, for the logistics, they have 12,100 parcel lockers. So they, if you buy something, they put it in a locker for you. You go and pick it up. Or they have 2,700 delivery couriers. Um, or And as it's put, they have over 40% covered for next day delivery. They have a 50, 50, I think it's like 51 million shopping app downloads and 41 million monthly active users. Um, so it depends how they consider that. So that's... Okay, so I guess it's like... Hmm. So on, on average over the last 12 months. Okay, so... So yeah, like I'm not too sure how they get this number, considering as they put the active buyer amount is 11.4 million. Um, so I imagine it's all the people that's ever gone through the uh, website. Um, but we just yeah, I'm not too sure how they work out the number to get to 41 million. Uh, but yeah, I guess we take it as it is. Um, 
And yeah, like the breakup of their uh, product sales is 25% electronics, 13% home and decorations, 10% children goods, 8% home and beauty, 8% apparel, 7% pharmacy, 7% packaged goods, and 23% of other miscellaneous things. Um, yeah, if we jump to the financials, the financials are pretty decent. Uh, be be mindful that uh, these financials are in rubles, so they're not in dollars, as most people might just look at it and think about it in dollars. Like, this company is not producing, like, billions of dollars in terms of revenues. Um, they are producing 66.599 billion in rubles in terms of revenues. Um, so one, one US dollar equals about 76 rubles, um, so if we divide that 66 billion by the 76, we get about 876 uh, million in revenue for the nine months. Um, and for the full 12 months, it was about 789 million for the full 12 months last year. Um, so they're growing very quick this year. Um, that the yeah, nine months of revenue is already way above their 12 months. Uh, and from 2018 to 2019, they grew about 60%, uh, whereas from the nine months from 2019 to 2020, they're growing at about 70%. So their revenue base is much larger, and their growth is even quicker. So it, it really shows uh, the momentum going for this company. Also, uh, this year probably contributed to more people buying online, so it also helped accelerate this company's growth. Um, and as we, they they are still making a loss. Um, so if we do a, like a quick calculation of about twelve, twelve point eight, twelve point eight billion divided by seventy six. Um, yeah. So they're roughly losing about one hundred sixty eight million for the nine months. Um. Which isn't too bad, considering this company raised about nine hundred ninety million um, not not too long ago. Well, basically in its IPO, um, then yeah, it's yeah. I think they're in a good shape. Uh, if we look at their cash that they had um, at at the end of September, um, it was still a decent amount anyway, uh, sixty seven million. Um, but of course, at their current burn rate, they really need to raise cash, hence why they've become a listed company and r tried to raise about a billion dollars. Um, yeah, so looking at the revenues, uh, looking at the uh, losses, uh, I quite like the growth. The reven the losses aren't as bad. And like one company I'd really compare it to was like Jumia. Um, so Jumia is a company that is operating in Africa and I guess you could also call it the Amazon of Africa Though the revenues aren't great. They are horrible in a sense. They are backwards um, From 2019 to 2020 the revenues for the third, for third quarter went from 40 million to 33 million euros So this is also in euros. They are a German based company operating in Africa so that hence why it's in euros um, and for the nine months they went from 111 million to 97 million so the revenue is not only not growing it's actually gone backwards um, and they are also losing quite a lot of money as well um, yeah in the third like for the nine months of 2020 they lost about 109 million euros um, so in the so to make that same comparison, this company is losing s just slightly less, no, or slightly more uh, than Jumia in terms of losses, but their revenues are bas basically probably about six or seven times higher. So revenues are six or seven times higher. They're growing at seventy percent. And the loss is only slightly higher in terms of a loss than what Jumia is reporting. And Jumia currently has a valuation of $3 billion. So if you did a math around this, uh, clearly there's a mismatch in terms of valuations. Uh, Jumia is either too high in its valuation 
or Ozone is too low in its valuation. And I very much am inclined to say uh, Ozone is too low in its valuation and that it could warrant a much higher valuation. Now I kind of see Ozone probably more of a 15 to 20 billion dollar company though it kind of does take time uh, to really recognize what this company does, understand the financials. Because I probably imagine uh, not a lot of people have heard of this company, not a, pro- not a lot of people probably looked at its IPO, um, hence um, it's just come under the radar. Though I think things like this will happen all the time, like uh, Palantir, like they listed about six uh, weeks ago, um, their share price was around $9. And then it is now closer to about $29. So things just change in the space of like several weeks. So I think the same thing will probably happen with Ozon. A lot of people just probably haven't had it on their radar. They haven't watched it. But I think this is also a good clear opportunity where this is a decent company that probably deserves a higher valuation. And yeah, as we kind of witness with Palantir, market doesn't get it right at the start, but it usually gets it right closer to the end. Um, and well, not the end of everything, but just just more in time, it gets it right. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Like um, for me, this is certainly an interesting company. Uh, decent growth. N- uh, losses aren't too bad. Like given the nine hundred ninety million raise. I'd say they probably have enough money to continue to run uh, for the next three, four years at the current burn rate. Though I imagine they're going to increase, um, th- try to increase their growth. So the loss could be a little higher, of course. Um, so I imagine the money, instead of three, four years of um, burn burning for that money, it might just be like two years. Um, and they might try to accelerate their path to profitability and become a sustainable company and they probably want you to do a raise at the end of it uh which will be also interesting for uh watching this company go um so yeah like if you yeah got questions post below or any comments are always uh welcome um until then uh good luck investing everyone